Hey guys, Captain here. Today I'm bringing you guys a little Lego building technique for uh, little cars. Now, Lego themselves once made a video um, kind of along these lines, but I thought I'd expand on it a little bit by showing off a few other methods and actually kind of going into more detail on how to go about implementing this. But anyway, the point is that if you take a car that's got fixed axles, and there are lots of great base plates that do this, you know, there's stuff like, uh, like this, this is the kind of guy right here, which I really like. It was useful for a lot of Mario Karts back in the day when I built those. Um, you know, they're great because they're real compact and uh, and they serve, uh, you know, useful purposes for building simple stuff. But um, the problem is that they're kind of hard to turn. This one's maybe a little easier just because the tires are so small. But if you want to turn it, you have to actually exert some uh, some force on it. And really what you're doing is you're basically making the wheels slide along whatever surface you're on. And so one good solution to that is having the axle turn itself. Now I used a solution kind of like this uh, with turntables in the Iron Man car. It's not perfect, but you can pretty, uh, pretty nicely steer it if you're willing to put your finger up here. Um, and it kind of works on its own if you just slide along. And again, all I did is I took the axle and I just put it on a turntable. So that's one way you can try and solve this problem. Um, but another way you can solve this problem is by building a little uh, contraption to make the axle move. And so a great way to do that on kind of a medium sized scale is with these pieces. Uh, most importantly, um, well you're going to need some Technic pieces. Most importantly you're going to need some uh, pins and some of these half pin, half uh, Technic rod pieces. And you want to kind without the ridges in them because this way they don't really have a lot of friction. Um, if you're wondering how do I tell which ones do and don't have the ridges, I mean if you have one that's got the ridges, pretty easy to tell. If not, generally it's the ones that, uh, for the pins, generally the ones that are not black. Colors like uh, gray tend to be the smooth ones. And for the half pin, half rod, um, generally the ones that aren't blue tend to be uh, the ones without ridges. With ridges, this doesn't work really well, uh, but without, it works very nicely. So what you'll do is you'll take uh, four of these pieces. I don't really know how to describe Technic pieces because I don't often use Technic builds, but you'll put a four length rod in there. And you can expand this to be bigger, but uh, I'm going with four length. Stick some um, Technic bricks with the rod hole uh, in them um, so we can anchor it down somehow and then finish that up with another one there and then take another four length rod. We don't have to anchor this with any Technic bricks but make basically the same thing. And then in each of these in the bottom stick a half rod, half pin and then what we'll do is we'll connect these using these kinds of pieces. If, uh, it's like a three length piece. It's got two holes for rods on the top and one hole for a pin on the side. This is a pretty important piece. There's, I imagine there are some other ways you could do it, but this piece makes it, um, makes it real easy. So you connect these and then stick the pins in the side. And we can stick our wheels in there. As you can see, this gives our wheels some real nice motion like this. And because we're using the, um, the really smooth ones that move kind of on their own accord, gravity will even move it itself. That's a good sign. because That means it's really, uh, really smooth and willing to move. So we can stick that on the front of our car. And it's so easy to steer it by just exerting a really minimal amount of force. We don't have to drag the wheels along this time. Just push a little bit. And there you go. So that's a great way to, to implement that technique. Another way you could do it, um, you could build something like this. I'll pull out the, the other pieces I was using here. But you could implement something like this. And in fact, you don't want to use these pins because these have got some ridges on them. I wonder if it'll focus so we can see. Yeah, you see those little plastic ridges? We actually don't want that. 
But uh, what's nice about this one, and this one, you'll want to make it longer. The reason for this is we've got this piece here, so how do you anchor it down? Well, you'll probably want some kind of plates in between. So you'll want to make this wider. This is going to be for larger scale stuff. But what's nice about this is when you connect with some kind of little bar here, we've got a rod up here, and it's connected, you can turn it with a steering wheel. And this is a technique, I saw something along these lines in uh, someone else's YouTube video at some point. You can also uh, build the same kind of contraption on a really small scale. I saw this on Flickr once, I'm not sure how one's supposed to go about implementing this, and I think the idea is you, you still attach some kind of technic piece so you eventually put bigger wheels on there. At least this way your contraption doesn't take up a lot of space. Maybe I'm looking at it upside down. Um, but it's the same deal. It's a little flimsier because it's held together by a lightsaber blade and not some strong technic rods. But again, notice how small it is compared to, um, to the other stuff we were doing. It's just It's like the size of the front part of this. So this could be done very compactly if you're willing to. Um, anyway, with that, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please rate, comment, subscribe. Send this to your friends. Check out my other videos. And I will see you guys next time.